Okay, been a hot minute since I've been uh, coaching in the server. I do apologize for my absence, but I've also been developing myself as a coach a little bit uh, during my off time. But nonetheless, I'm back with a fair clip in a silver lobby. Uh, Raptor, I'm going to refer to you as. This is an interesting match overall aside for some stupid mistakes, which I'll outline below. I feel my performance is all right. Positioning has improved overall. Um, aim is still not the best. I believe it's gotten slightly better. Now, I will mention I'm trialing a, a new sort of uh, VOD review format where I've already watched this game ahead of time. I've got some timestamps down. I've got the main points I want to get across. And it'll hopefully just make the whole thing a bit more streamlined. Uh, I still believe positioning is, is the biggest issue, so we're going to go over that. But I actually did enjoy uh, your aim. I, I think you were hitting some nice directs during the whole match, and I think a lot of the time it was overall better. There was less of that uh, plat sort of projectile aim of just close the gap to my target because I'm missing and get closer and closer until I can't miss. So I thought that was really good to see. Um... The other thing I wanted to point out was that you said they eventually counterpicked, and I think they swapped to like a Bashan or an Ash, and even a um, Iliari or Ilari, however it's pronounced. Um, and yes, that's a counter, but I, I want to actually say that this comp that they roll out on this uh, Widow, Mercy, and Echo, and even Kiriko as well, this is a horrible comp to play Fair into. <laughs> this is probably what you're going to see in higher ELO lobbies in terms of actual direct counters to Fair rather than Ash. Because a damage boosted Echo can always win a 1v2, even if you even have this combination going. And then the Widow is just going to control all the sidelines. So you're always taking an unfavorable 1v1 against the Echo. So this is actually quite horrible. And I think it actually theoretically gets easier uh, when they do swap, but nonetheless. Um, just wanted to, to state that for the record because a bit of macro knowledge on, on uh, your behalf. Um, and then I watched the end and that was that was quite unfortunate to see and, I, and I'll get a little bit into that. I don't know that there's much on your fault in terms of how you lose the final fight, but there is definitely some things that could have stopped it from ever getting to that point, which we will go over. Um, now, the... Big things, I'll just get my timestamp up on my other screen. Um, the big thing we're going we're gonna to cover is, is positioning, because I think that's still the biggest uh, sort of flaw in the gameplay that we've got so far. So I'll just find a nice wall for me to do a bit of note drawing on first, and we will keep it pretty clean. This looks decent. So space is what we're basing positioning around, right? Space. It is everything in Overwatch. It, it's, it, it is like it's gravity, it's it's air, it's it's everywhere, and it interacts with everything, right? Um, now, how we can influence it as Farah specs into two things, or as DPS heroes in general, is hero strengths. And number two is cover usage. These two things together are going to be the key to Pharah controlling space. Now, what are hero strengths? Hero strengths, technically in abilities slash CDs. And in this, damage slash mobility. Because you'll often see that there is a trade-off in a lot of DPS heroes between these two things. Do they have a lot of damage? Do they have a lot of mobility? Ash has a pretty decent DPS overall between her headshot potential, her damage boost thresholds that get boosted by Mercy uh, or Discord or whatever. Her dynamite is damage over time. But she only has Coach Gun for movement. You compare that to someone like Junkrat, huge amounts of chunk damage through Conk Mine and, and direct hits. But the Conk Mine is also his only form of movement. He has no other movement. And so he's always sacrificing that damage to be more mobile. And then you have Tracer, who, whose abilities don't impact the damage at all. It's purely just a primary fire, but she is able to utilize that damage more through her abilities that give her mobility. So with Pharah, what have we got? We got Jump Boots, uh, sorry, Jet Boosters, 
Um, or jump jets, we'll call them jump jets. Uh, we have conch mine, and we have long range uh, damage, spam damage, without fall off, and that's the key. So Farrah can play at a lot of ranges, like anywhere from A to B, right? And in this distance, there is going to be no change to a fall off, unlike these supposed supposed counters like Widow, Ash, Bastion, right? They have damage fall off, hit scanner heroes generally do. Critical heroes, not so much because they gotta lead their shots, they're harder to hit, right? Um, what that means is you don't necessarily have to be always playing at this effective range, you know, that Cassidy has where he has to, he has a massive damage fall off and his nade is only thrown X distance, right? Like he has to be able to close the gap and be able to play in specific ranges. As Farah, we do not need to do that. The only reason we change our distance is by the tempo of the fight and how the fight is playing out and what resources we've got available to us. Do we have a mercy pocket with us all the time, etc. Um, now, her abilities in terms of mobility is jump jets being able to fly in general and conch mine. Conch mine horizontal movement is great. Jump Jets allows us to get up to high grounds, allows us to get above people, makes it harder for them to shoot us. Aiming upwards is harder. We'll get into that as well as they swap to fair eventually. Um, and so you can get to a lot of places on the map. Um, and that's going to be the key to outmaneuvering and outplaying and controlling space. Uh, and cover usage is just the secondary part of that, which is um, allows us to hold it for longer because we can kite and we can control LOS, which is the second thing. And this specs into um, sort of, we never want to be getting shot by someone that we're not shooting, right? We need to have an equal balance of pressure going out as it is coming in. And if we need to be able to cut LOS from everyone to be able to get resources or to get a mega, or get whatever it is to reload even, then we can do that, and it's up to us to put ourselves in positions that allow us to control the LOS, not the enemy. Because if we need to reload it, if we need to get resources, we need to be in control of it. Otherwise, we're dead most of the time. So, that is the diagram. Take a screenshot or whatever if you want. doesn't bother me. But this is the key to this match, I think, from what I saw. And I've got some timestamps, so we're going to start off with just where we're up to right now, which is 40 seconds in. Um, and this rollout is fine. But what you're going to find is, on Colosseo, it's a horrible first point. I get it. It's a DPS nightmare, this choke. There is not a lot, unless you're vertically mobile, which fair is, but these windows are pretty much all you've got for an off angle. You cannot rotate through here. And it's especially difficult for you right now because I've got a sniper holding this massive sight line. Right? So I get it. It's difficult. That being said, we still don't want to be shooting tank. We want to be going and taking space. So we'll let it play out. Show what you do, you spam out the Doom a little bit. Now we're looking to press in. You hear the Widow shot go off. My audio might be a bit low, but you can hear it go off from this perspective. So you know they have a Widow off the bat. You should know it already because you can hold tab by this point. Nonetheless, you know they have a Widow. All right, that has instantly ruled out all of this space for the most part. Unless we can close the gap quickly to here, but even still, this is risky. Why? Because Widow has grapple. She can play on this high ground if she wants to eliminate you first, which she most likely will. Or she will just swing wide for a second to take a poke shot. In which case, this can end up very badly for you because you also have to cross that gap to get back out, right? So it's a, it's an aggressive play. We'd probably only do this if we had a Mercy hard pocketing us. So to me, this says, I'm not going in main. But what we do have available to the rest of us, to the, what we do have available is this whole side of the map. All of this space, which has some nice pillars of natural cover and has all this natural cover and has high ground and has megas and has minis and, and whatnot. And it's a big, it is dangerous because you get to this point and then you cut LOS of your team, right? They can't see you anymore. You're not getting support from your from your supports, right? They're even back here. I think that's a junk, right? So it is a risk play. And this Echo is doing the exact same play. She realizes that she's going to look for an angle in here because she doesn't want to sit in main, right? You need to make a point, uh, make a decision at this point whether or not it's safe for you to keep going or if you need to hesitate or if you need to just dance between 
these two positions, being on top of the window and being here and being getting support from your team, as well as just holding this. Because if you are if you can't play through here and contest this Widow, because all about playing against Widow is being able to close the gap to her, which we can't do when she plays these long sidelines, then the least you can be doing is occupying and controlling, getting back to the main point, always controlling this space to stop the Echo from doing that onto your team. That's value, that's indirect value. That's finding value when you cannot find direct value through getting kills or something, is denying the Echo this opportunity by just taking this 1v1, taking this duel. You may even win it, and then that's direct value. But if nothing else, you're staying in LOS of your supports while the Echo is about to not be in LOS of her supports. Although I think the Mercy is actually coming to help her. But the point stands, we need to control this space because their Widow is controlling this space. And we're just going to hope, theoretically it should work, but we're just going to hope that this Orisa can maintain space better than the Doom can. And you're slowly going to wing this tank trade through just spam damage of Junkrat and Widow not hitting enough shots. That's basically how this has, this first fight has to play out. And you will, ideally you could wait until Bot gets out of this main area to then look to play aggressively. Um, even if it meant that you gave up first fight, if you were thinking higher level, but regardless. Uh, but that's the point I want to make. Um, just that we should be playing on this outside. Even the Echo doesn't even follow through with what she was going to do. And then we end up just dropping in main, exposing ourselves to everybody, not playing around natural cover that great. But this is uh, that was a nice direct. Just unfortunate the splash damage hurt us a bit. Uh, but anyway, on to the next timestamp, 2.10. Uh, now, yes, this, 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 this. Or maybe I've missed it a little bit. Yeah, it might have been more two minutes. Okay. First of all, scary. Scary, this little... Uh, this was a little bit of plat aim again. Like, I, shit, I'm missing this mercy, I'm missing this mercy. She's low, she's killable, she's killable. But we do recognize it, we back out, we live, that's good. If we had a died here, that would have been feeding our brains out. Now, utilizing what we talked about at the start, hero strengths, mobility, controlling LOS. I want to be sitting up here. Why? Because think about where the Widow has to play to get LOS of you. She has to play really aggressively. She has to play close on corners, which she doesn't want to do. She wants to play long sidelines, right? So she might be back here. In which case, if she wants to play back here, then you just counter it. You rotate around the back here. You're always trying to rotate the map, always trying to get her playing in uncomfortable positions and having to play in aggressive positions to get an LOS of you. And if you sit here, you're not only using all of this cover, right? But you also have access onto this high ground for when this fight is eventually... And I'll just reposition my camera here. Um, when this fight is eventually going to turn into here. The bot being here and this being the point of contention, you're going to have access to this high ground. The high ground is going to give you an LOS to step backwards. That's the value of high ground, being able to walk backwards and use the, the floor as natural cover from anyone sitting down here that you can just peek and keep spamming shots at. And you've got a mini up here as well. So you've got your own support. These are power positions, right? This is what we're highlighting throughout the map so that you can utilize these next time you get you find yourself in these situations. Because look, like this widow is not even noticing you. Like right now, you could be in here. You might even two tap it because she may not react quick enough. You get an instant direct because she's hard scoping and not moving, and then you might be able to conquer. Um, you might be able to direct, then conquer here, and then shoot here, and she's dead. Or you can just straight up take out the mercy or the Moira. You've got access to whoever you want, and you're gonna force this doom to maybe use resources to kite up to here, and all the while the bot is getting pushed. So we get pushed out, and I'd like to be in right now. And this is the other part, is a bit of cover usage. When I'm swinging across to kill this Moira, I'm swinging across to this wall. Why? So I'm only shooting at whoever, so I can only get shot by whoever's, whoever I am shooting at, apologies. 
Um, I don't want to be sitting here shooting the Moira because the Echo is about to come back from spawn. The Doom's about to come back from spawn. The Widow could be trying to get a pick as she's going out, trying to trade a death really quick. We don't want to die right now. We need to play it safe. If the Moira gets out, she gets out. It's not the end of the world, right? What, it, what would be the end of the world would be us getting staggered and getting killed right now. Or even just lesser than that, getting forced out if we can't keep this pressure. Now, what is wrong with this spot? Oh, we hit three minutes because that was my next time stamp, 2.30. We're almost there. But we have the Mercy now. The Mercy's even positioned over here. We can hold this spot and we can play this window and hold this high ground until they tell us not to. Or likewise, or, or not likewise, opposite of that, we're going to play this wall and we're going to play on this high ground a little bit and we can even peek in here and there's a mini there. I'm going to play back here. Or I'm going to sit back here and I'm going to keep utilizing this. But this is a bit scarier. Right? Why? Because they have a Widow who's playing these long sidelines. So this is a bit more out in the open than these two positions. Like, how does Widow kill you from here? Realistically. She has to play down here and somehow hit a shot on you up here. Like, playing around on this window. It's not going to happen. She's, she's never going to push past this line to be able to get LOS on you. So that's one less person you have to worry about. That's one less counter that you have to worry about. Now you're taking a 1v1 easily with this Echo. Or you have quick access when the Doom goes in. You're going to have easy access to the back line that's going to position here. Or rotate through the building. But we'll see in this fight. Oh, that's the wrong person, sorry. That nice barrage, but just that... We play anywhere but, and we sort of play out in the open, we're wandering around a bit. So like, how easy for this Ash to hit some shots on you? And a better Ash may have already hit some on you. We use Conk a bit preemptively. We don't have a great escape tool, we need to be in the air. But now, this is the difference, right? That little, even if it was just getting dinked and using Conk to go from here to here, You've given them this space. And now to get back here, the Ash has already got LOS of you. So this is incredibly difficult compared to just sitting here, even sitting here if you can't stay in the air, that's fine. And just spamming this bridge so that every time she peeks, she's getting hit and getting knocked around a bit by the splash damage and the movement, uh, the, the boop of Pharaoh's missiles. And it makes it incredibly difficult for her and the backline to take space. And your team may just straight up kill this Doom slash Echo who's about to push in because they're not getting support and you're denying them their space and you're controlling your space. Again, controlling space. That's what we're looking at. But now we're sort of stuck here in no man's land where it feels like, you know, we're just tunnel visioning a bit and shooting what's in front of us. So we're looking for an off angle on the back line now. I like this, this is good. We can't quite clean up the shots. We forced. Did we, I think we panicked a bit there. I don't think we needed to conk away. Yeah, we took about 30 damage. I think we're okay. We could have stayed. We get the echo, but we're plat aiming a bit. We're tunneling. We're on the ground. We're about one good ass shot away from death. Keep shooting the back line. Don't be shooting the tank. The tank will die when he's got no supports left. Follow the Moira, follow the Moira. Now they get out. Okay. And again. We're playing back here. Not control, not use not utilizing this big natural cover. It's right next to us. Not even this one. It's next to us. We're playing perfectly in between. We're playing a long sideline to our hit scan counters in quotations hit scan counters and we're going to get forced out or we're going to force some resources right now we're playing in main and this is the whole essence of taking angles is that it is angles make it difficult for them to walk up if everyone is positioned here no one is controlling any of this space meaning this is all theirs if you are positioned here do a pharaoh if you're positioned here, they own that space. If you're positioned over there, just put a P there, 
they control. Maybe I'll just get rid of it all. If you were over here, they would control that space. And I'd argue that this space is more valuable because of where the bot is. So this is the better position to take rather than this one. This one has better access to the back line. This one has a mega back here. As if you have a mercy with you, because it's a bit more out in the open. There's not a lot of places to kite to compared to here where you can just drop or you can maybe conk yourself across this gap like you've done a couple times. But at point stands. And now we end up in open space again. And that's a good ult. That's a good ult. Need to find the Moira. We're using Conk a bit scared. I think we're just going to get killed by the Bash and... Yeah, we just rolled out a spawn. Using Conk a bit defensively and a bit passively, like a bit scared. So I'd like to see you adjust that as well. Because what's better than displacing yourself to make you harder to hit is displacing them to make them miss their shots while you still know where they're going and you can shoot the next shot to where you know they're going. Um, I just wanted to highlight this quickly. Just sit. Just do less. Do less. Just sit here and spam who you're looking at. Spam the, the Kiriko if you want to rather than the Doom. That's fine. But we don't need to drop into here and get stared at by their entire team. Right? Like, you would have had to have made him play. If you had a sat up in that window, he would have had to have come out here just to see you. In which case, the second you see the bash and you go, fuck this, I'm out, like, <laughs> um, I'm leaving, <laughs> All right? But it's very difficult for you to get out now from where you are, and you'll just die from it. Not just from, obviously, also moving into the bob, but, um, like, you got really close to them too, just taking an unnecessary amount of spam. Uh, 545... Oh yeah, just another little one right here. We don't need to swing with this uh, with this cleanup, right? It's like really good kill. Now just close the gap. The difference being, like yes, I said earlier, no fall off, right? That's a bonus, but. Shots are harder to hit, right? No projectile, you have to guess. This is when getting close and getting personal is not a bad thing, right? Cross this gap, they don't have LOS of you this whole time. You get from here to here because you're utilizing the high grounds as cover. And the US is taking the offensive anyway. But you cross across here, they can't shoot you. We don't care, we're not shooting them. We only want to be shooting or getting shot at by someone we're shooting. If we're not shooting at anyone, we don't want to be getting shot by anyone either equal balance of pressure going in and out, right? You can get to this point. You could even conk. I'm not sure if you've got it on you. We can check really quick. We almost have conk. Where did we use it? We jumped it up. We jumped it up. All right, now we instantly go. It's about three seconds away. We instantly go here. We have conk. We conk off here. We're on top of them. Right? We know they're kiting. They're either going back to here or they're going into this street. So predict predict where they're going to go to. Um, where are we? 650. Oh uh, yep, got in a bad spot there. And this is this was sort of what I alluded to earlier. Actually, I forgot that this happened, but that was the problem with playing in here is that if things go south, we have to then cross this gap again, right? That's quite scary. We actually get bailed out a bit by the mercy. But I liked this play of, you're in a bad position, try and get a trade. I really liked this. And that was just unfortunate that she got her beacon out and probably got a bit of more healing before we got the kill on her. Now this next little hesitation of poking the doom is the only thing that gets you killed. Otherwise you probably get out and this is a great play. Right, just trying to get out this way instead of just instantly going to where you're going to go now. 
that was a tiny and then obviously going back again was bad <laughs> but that would have been a really good play that would have been really good and i was still happy to see the thought process there i thought that was really good eight minutes in Uh, this was a little bit about ultimate usage. Now, in the last fight, we saw Ilara use her ult, right? And I think the Pharah fed her brains out, but we, she telegraphed it pretty hard that she had ult. She's pretty hard person to barrage. Ilara's already used ult. We're looking at who's who's key. If we're, if we're looking at who do we want to eliminate from the next fight, Bastion would be a great one. Getting rid of his ult. Doom is hard to kill uh with barrage because he can just power block it or move or alt any of the above um who's easy is potentially an alari but she's used alt so she's not gonna have a huge impact on this next fight she would be good to get early if you could get her alone and make sure you live through it but that's gonna be a bit difficult because she's gonna play with her team a lot more if she's just used fade really killable but obviously you gotta wait for that trigger and same thing as bastion you gotta wait for his turret because the armor buff that he gets from that and the sustain of these two healers is probably enough to keep him alive long enough for him to kill you first. Um, but just a good option to be able to kill the Bastion, right? The Bastion is a key person. And the other thing being that your Orisa has ult, so you want to be putting yourself in a position to be one conch blast away from getting into her ult. And I think you just miss it. And you see the Bastion has used turret. So that's a green light already in my mind, right? Now I'm playing really aggressive. I'm pushing up into here, playing around this archway, probably somewhere up here. Jiggle peek in the corner and spamming. I'm going to still be hesitate a little bit here. We're hesitating with shooting the Doom again. Like, forget about the Doom. Think about your target focus. Let's go take an angle. Let's go control space. Which would be, again, the same as we had at the beginning of the round, where we play along this wall, and then we play onto this high ground, and then we peek. And then this is it. You missed it. You missed it by, a by not much, not much. And you tried to conk, but then you thought, oh, I probably won't hit that well enough. And I may end up somewhere else. And you just held it, which was good. You didn't force it. You waited, you played around this high ground, really good. And then a nice ult. So it's a good ult. It could have been cleaner in the fact that we could have been ready to go on top of that Orisa thing and ready to use it the second they used um, Fade or uh, whatever Alari's jump thing is called. But nonetheless, and nice clean shot there. But nonetheless, good that you didn't try and force it after you missed the opportunity. I did like to see that. Uh, nine minutes, so we're pretty much up to there already. Ah, uh, yep. Okay, this was too aggressive. Too aggressive. You could do this maybe if you had a mercy pocket. But it is... It's either too aggressive because you don't have a mercy pocket. Or even if you did, it's too early, right? And it's only too early by about this much space. Because at this point, this is their sort of front line. So you aren't taking an off angle here you're actually pushing your you're acting as a tank you're pushing your Orisa's front line up to this point and you're taking all of the attention and you don't have support <laughs> you're about to cut los from your back line right so there's a few key things here, and it's just slightly mistimed it's not the worst and it definitely wouldn't be if you sat here and then conked yourself onto the back line and barraged that'd be an interesting play i'd like to see but i think the better play here once this bot is reached here, this area sort of becomes useless. So that's maybe when you rotate under here and you play through that window that we were talking about, these two windows here. And you utilize this as a spam, error, uh, spam angle, sorry. And you may be able to get the beacon gone. You may be able to take a 1v1 with the Pharah. I know you saw the Pharah up here a second ago, and that might be why you're going to contest her. Um, but it's just slightly too early. It's just slightly too early. And you get all, like, you don't, <laughs> you don't even get focus right away because I think they're a bit f tunneling on the... Um, on the Junkrat tire, but then you just end up without resources and a bit tunneled and a bit all over the place, and it gets you out of your rhythm, right? You get forced out. 
So you're not dead, but for the next however long, like 9.15 to 9.25, pretty much the next 10 seconds, which is a death, minus the travel back from spawn. Uh, you, you're, you're removed from this fight. And it was because you went too early and you got forced out. Right? Instead of sitting in these positions and just slowly taking the space and slowly continually building pressure through the hero strengths, your non-drop-off spam damage. And now we're forced back here. Their fair is taking a lot more space than ours is. She kills our junk. She forces our mercy to rotate into the doom. And then we just get cleaned up. Now, that's all I have to say on the half of controlling space. These are the type of things that we need to start seeing in the gameplay. Is, uh, is recognizing what space is important for me to occupy to make it difficult for their team to take space. Which, this was a great example. So was the high ground uh, coming out of here. And yeah, th those are the big two, to be honest. <laughs> these, these are really big high grounds that we did not really utilize. And even this wall, you know, like if they come back from spawn, you can sit back here because you can even, if the bot is like maybe somewhere here, you can still cut it even further and you got a mega below you. Um, so a little bit like that. Um, in terms of, you did ask about what you could have done to regain momentum. Um, I have 10.30 pinned as a timestamp, so I'll check that out. I think, yes, this death. Okay, so from here. Now, you got killed last in the last fight so you're slow coming back from spawn i don't think you staggered because it wasn't that bad you didn't die so late i think that is unlucky that's really unlucky that he just yeeted a bash and right click and somehow stuck to you didn't even splash damage you that's just unfortunate uh but i think your arisa just goes way too hard like just she just goes in and feeds uh there's not much you can do about that except Go die on cart so you respawn together or get out. There's a moment right now. And the only reason you would go into cart is if you were confident you could take someone out with you because they are going to have a, f a further way to go to get back from spawn than you will before the next fight. That is the only reason. We missed that opportunity by this stage, right? So we need to turn and run. We need to get out. And I think you just hesitate again here, and it almost gets your mercy killed. But worse than that, is that we're still slowly getting out, slowly getting out. We think we're out, and then we get killed. That's a death that then forces our mercy to waste res, so we don't have res for this fight. But then worse than that, she's even going to die to the pharaoh. Because the pharaohs go and take space. So you're now down on mercy. You're turning to peel. I think you trade mercies, which is lucky. But because all this is going on and your Arisa has gone in again, she's fed her brains out. So it's just one of those, you, you stag it out. Uh, there's, there's not a lot to it. If you're really looking to split hairs, is that you should have just gotten straight out and maybe you don't force res to get used and then the Mercy doesn't die. But even then, there's nothing to say that the Marissa, the Arisa still wouldn't have just gone balls to the wall and just fed her brains out anyway. So it, it's tough to say. Um, but that's all I could really pick up from this. You do actually a decent job of playing space here, probably because you're not getting healed the whole time, and so you're jiggle peeking this wall, which is exactly what we would want to see throughout this entire match. Um, and I will also mention, maybe if you can find a code, uh, I'm sure there's one out there, about Pharaoh 1v1s, because it's incredibly important in Pharaoh 1v1s to stay above the other Pharaoh. That's like 101 Pharaoh v Pharaoh matchups is you need to stay above her because it's way easier to hit shots hitting down, looking down than it is looking up. Um, but that's all I want to do. I don't want to drag this out any longer. I hope it all makes sense. Um, but yeah, controlling space is the big thing here. And important to being able to control space is playing around these natural covers. By playing around in here, you're occupying this space. And you're making it hard for them to push into whatever space you're attacking or you're putting pressure on. Right. Um, 
other than that, liked the damage, like how that was coming along. The target focus is better, the ult usage was quite good, all in all. I didn't have a problem with any of the ults, so good to see. Um, so yeah, just focus on the controlling space. Second would be a little bit of fairer on fairer practice. There'll be a workshop code out there somewhere. Um, if you really can't find any, just let me know. I'll have a look myself. Um, it's been a while since I've looked for workshop codes though, so there's probably something uh, better out there since I've last checked. And a little bit of just being more aggressive with your Conknade. Um, I think a couple of the times we've been a bit scared with it, but that may change with the positioning. So just focus on the controlling space for now and see how you can interact uh, with your conk mind based on that. Um, but yeah, good good to see, man. And uh, I hope your games all go well and hope to get more VODs from you soon.